Hello everyone, AKW Ways and Anyone once again here, <clears throat> and today I'm going to be doing one of these um, games I bought this month, and I'm doing it in this fashion, I really haven't got much to show or to explain, <clears throat> because there's certain other things I'm too I'm busy focusing on. One of them I'll, exp I'll be explaining in detail what it is. That's just been one of the things I've been looking forward to. And so as always I'm going to be talking about what games I have been buying this month. Give my quick thoughts on them. Um, and such. So then, without further ado, I've only bought two games, unfortunately, in physical form. On PSN, they've been having all sorts of um, deals going on. Mm -hmm. oh, so, I did eventually manage to buy a memory card for my PS Vita, so that's good. So I'm pleased with that, and it's all set up, and I'm happy to do some recording on the PS Vita. <clears throat> so, and as well as that, I bought a few digital games for the PS Vita, like Conception 2, Resident Evil Revelations 2, and so forth. But here, I'm just going to be talking about the um, physical games, because they're the most important to talk about. So without further ado, guys, let's talk about the first of the two physical games I bought. Red Dead... Oh no, Dead Island Reptide, Riptide. Now, Dead Island is a rather... Uh, how can I explain it? Dead Island's a very underwhelming action RPG sort of game. It's played in first person perspective. Played in first person. And you supposedly use a lot of melee weapons that you can that you can find around and you can customize, repair, repair <coughs> and use it to fight um, fight off hordes of the undead. Riptide is a sort of sequel or a follow-up I guess. Where you can play as the same survivors from the original game and you can import your character from the first Dead Island game. Here yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I've only played just the first few minutes of it. Mm, just the registered just the register one of the trophies. It's I'm not gonna say too much of it because but then it's not entirely that g g good. Like the melee combat's a little biased at times. It's not flexible. It's not amazing. You can you can be bombarded by so many zombies and so forth. It's just not a very good game. Good game to play, to be honest. <coughs> and I was going to buy the game with the um, Survivor the Survivor Pack and Fashion deal, Fashion Victim DLC. But however, the code was already used. So, oh well, no biggies. <coughs> and I have got the original Dead Island, which is the Game of the Year edition. This one doesn't have a Game of the Year edition, but I'm assuming that there's like a double pack. I found a double pack or something, which I'm going to get sometime soon. Which will have everything from the ground up.
Yeah, so it's alright, I guess, for what it is. I'll have a, I'll eventually have a go on the go. So I eventually do a, have a sort of off screen run with it. And I'm planning to get the um, Escape Dead Island because I think my friend Thomas has that one. And it's the really crappy one. Because I've seen that one on the top 10 worst games of 2014 list. So I'm one of them. <clears throat> so yeah, that was Dead Island when we have tried. Um, I did say that I got, 20, I got 15 gigabyte memory card for my PS Vita. I still on my PS Vita now. This is going to be temporarily until I can find like a 64 gigabyte one. Which will be insanely expensive, but I'm hoping I can find that. Mm, cheap or something. Because I want to get two of those. One for my PS Vita and one for my PS4. I mean PS TV. One for my PS Vita and one for my PS TV. <clears throat> Alright, now then, last game, guys. This is the highlight of it. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Since its announcement at E3, I couldn't believe my eyes I would see it. With my own face. I'm just going to lay it down here. I'm just going to get, get it. But evil, that. I was looking forward to it since I saw it, the, <clears throat> since I saw it at the E3 2018. <clears throat> and I've been, and I was so shocked. I broke into tears, <clears throat> and I wanted to get my hands on it immediately <clears throat> the day, the day of the purchase. And it's a, and it's something we waited ten long years for since its original Jap, since. It's updated release, got a, got a Japan only PS3 release, and would you believe what it is, if you couldn't already guess. Tales of Asperia Definitive Edition. That's right. Tales of Asperia. <laughs> yes, the, 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 the second it played at E3, I was shocked. I was broke. <clears throat> my tear broken. Emotionally. I could not leave my eyes, I would see this, the free, and the fact is, this is, this was the Tales game we waited 10 long, we waited a long, long time for. This game came out on the original, this game's original release came out on the Xbox 360, I have it right there, There's, there it is, the Xbox 360 version, right here, and it was a PlayStation 3 release in Japan that came out around the same year this game came out over here in the United Kingdom. The game came out in 2008 for the Japan, for the Japan and North American markets. But we Europeans had to wait like a couple more months. I'm thinking 8 months is my guess. 8 months is my guess. Because how was how long we had to wait for to finally get our hands on it. And then at that very same time there was a there was a Japanese only PS3 port added all new heaps of con new content. That was never seen in the Xbox 360 original. And now, after ten long years, we finally get our hands on it. And this is the game and this celebrates the tenth anniversary of Tales of Asperia. So it it would it would it made perfect sense for them. For Bandai Namco to go back to this game. And boy, it's a fan favourite. And it says so, because it says on the back. The fan favourite Tales of Episode is back. I, <clears throat> this was what this was the game I waited and this was the game I waited a while, a long time for, like I said, when I saw it at E3. I couldn't believe my eyes that would show this. It does mean that by now, it does mean that now, Bandai Namco is taking the Tales series much more seriously, and they've gotten the Bandai Namco's God Eater director now um, involved with the Tales franchise, and they may, and they may be focusing on going back all the way to the original Tales of games 
and start localizing them proper and start localizing them proper that means we may get um, Tales of Fantasia now if you don't do cross we might get the Tales of Destiny remastered we might get Tales of Reaper we might get uh, Tales of Innocence maybe and for, for remaster you just don't you just do not know <clears throat> considering now the way that they're now going to be taking the franchise forward <clears throat> the way they're going to be taking the franchise forward they have got Tales of Crystoria and an unannounced um, Tales of game that they are talking that they're, that they're quietly talking about but until we see um, Tales of Festival 2019 <clears throat> we'll have to wait and see what happens. So anyway, let's talk about Tales for Spirit Definitive Edition. This is the popular, most popular entry in the Tales franchise. Came out on the 360, like I said. This game follows Yuri Lol. <clears throat> and he starts out trying to, trying to take back the stolen Aqua Blastia. And then as he find, but then afterwards, he finds out that there's more to it than um, blast than just the simple looks of each blastia, where they all each have various effects on the where they each have various effects on the world. And he and then and on top of all that, the empire, the guilds, all that, all at each other's throats and whatnot. <laughs> And Yuri, ha and Yuri and his companion and his unlikely companions all have to do exactly what is right for the world. This game has some of the most interesting and memorable characters. Yep, Yuri Lal is one of the top protagonists in, in any Tales of game. He follows like, all the main, all the, like the main JRPG tropes. You know, he's like this young teenager. Doesn't have a doesn't have an idea what the hell is going on in the world. <clears throat> Instead, you've got this main character who is a former knight and is an adult, and he used to like um, serve the knights, and he they, and he left the knights because like they're in because of the way they handle the laws and all that. He didn't like the way the empire holds upholds their laws. But Yuri t likes to take matters into his own hands, even if it means he has to dirty his hands for the greater good. And that's what makes Yuri so fantastic. It he is a brilliant character, Yuri. And then there's all the other characters as well. Flint, Flynn, Estelle, Carol, Raven, Rita, Rapid. <laughs> Yeah, repeat. The dog there with a pipe in his mouth, <laughs> which is funny. Now, going back to Tales of Asperia after playing, um, oh, what is it? Tales of Bazeria, Tales of Asteria, Tales of Innocence, Tales of the Tempest, <clears throat> the Japan only ones, two, the two Japan only ones. Playing Tales of Asperia required me to get, take a bit of time to adjust. Because you can see it in my video, you can see it in some of my earlier videos. I was playing very, very rough. Considering I haven't played the game in such a long time, I played it on the Xbox 360 when I got my con when I got my Xbox 360 console back in um, oh what is it, December 2010, and I could and I was go and I was enjoying the combat, but there were times. I'd be running, I'd be down, jumping all over the place. I was jump, I was um, missing a lot of my, listen, missing a lot of my attacks. I was not fighting proper, proper. Mm, so it required a bit of time for me to re truly adjust to the 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 to the, the player to go free run. The battle system, yeah, the, no, hang on. Uh, Tales of Azuria's combat is entirely free run, so that means you can free, freely run around the battle arena without needing to hold down the free run button. 
Vesperia has the free run button. That was introduced in Tales of the Abyss. But you had to hold down the button to do to go into the free run. And trying to utilize the free running did take again like it took me a while to adjust to it. Like I, I knew I was getting and I was getting and I've been going through like a lot of the fights just fine. Just there are times I'll just make a couple of mistakes with that. But but other than that it does provide like a hefty amount of tutorials to get you to uh, warm you up. Like it shows you the basics and then you'll start showing you how to do the over limit, and then it'll show you how you do how to do the um, burst arts, and then it'll show you how to do the fatal strikes. Which will re which are very fun which are fantastic. As eventually the Mystic Arts as well. Now, the Mystic Arts and the Over Limit did take me also a lot of time to figure it out. And I had to look up a guide to see how to do the Mystic Arts proper. <clears throat> so it did so this was one of them I had to take a lot of time in the game to truly understand what I was doing wrong in the combat and and then eventually now I'm I'm, I'm getting the combat, I'm grasping the combat again now. So I'm, I'm I'm pretty sweet to go. So I'm now sweet to go. As for now, as for the, for the new content, Tales of Asperia added definitive added new content in the PS3 version, which is in the, the definitive edition. This included new areas, new events. New dungeons, to, to new, mo new, end, new boss battles. And Flynn Shifo finally joining the party more more times throughout the game, and would actually would fully join you throughout the whole throughout the fi throughout the final act. He would join you permanently throughout the final act instead of um. What is it? One moment in the Xbox 360 original where uh, he would join you only at one point throughout the game. And then that's it. He doesn't join again. And Flynn Shifo is um, Yuri's longtime friend who had, um, who was, who, <clears throat> who has a huge history with the Knights. Who, Flynn Shifo has a huge duty to dis distribute in the Knights. And Flynn Shifo is a very solid character, and I, and I really liked him a lot, a lot in this game, and especially the Full Strike movie as well. I liked him a lot in that. I liked him in that one, even though I liked Yuri more. And there was, the, and there, and there was the new boss encounter I had, and I wanted to take on, which was Don Whitehouse, which you never fought him as a boss in the Xbox 360 original. In the PS3 version, you would fight him as a boss, and in the definitive edition, you can't fight him as a boss in that version as well. Commonly, most people would lose to him because he has like insanely high stats, he's like over level 60, but it is possible to beat him. If you've mastered the combat system by now, you know, like, um, Gone to learn how to use the um, over limit, how to use the um, fail strikes, and master some of Yuri's combos. <clears throat> Don White House will still prove a challenge, but he can be beaten, and I have beaten him, although not legitimate. I had the DLC download for free on the PS4 version. Yes, I've got the PS4 version. Where like um. It will give you free, some free costumes that you can try out. As well as that, a few um, easy gald, <clears throat> some level ups, some synthesis kits, some trial packs as well. I only used a level up. I only used the level ups so that I could take on Don in my house. And one of the Gigantor monsters I had to have. Um, Encountered by mere chance, which I did not expect to see. There. I was not expecting to see it, to see it there. 
and I ended up and I ended up running away like a coward. Not like me. But now I'm now I knew eventually I need to level up and I beat those and I beat those two. They were challenging <clears throat> Dawn Light House was challenging, but you do when you get a diamond from it. You also do get a couple of new costumes that were never in the original game. The school uniforms are available as DLC. Get the ultimate co get the ultimate hero outfits. The villains outfits, which will reference the villains from each Tales game. Um, and as well as that, costumes referencing other Namco characters. And as well as the other costumes, which are from Tales of the Abyss. <clears throat> and as well as the um, costumes from the movie Tales of Asperia, The First Strike. As well. So that's, so that's cool. And then lastly, there's the new, new character that was added to the um, PS3 and the Definitive Editions of Tales of Asperia. Here, it, that's, that's the new character for the updated versions, Paddy Flua. I wanted to play as Paddy Flua in the um, updated versions. As she is the pirate girl who has a relationship with Ifrit because she is the granddaughter of Ifrit, a name that um, many Tales fans will be familiar with. Like, if you know I the name Ifrit, you will definitely be familiar with Ifrit appearing it, seen in uh, Tales of Asperia to fit in the updated versions. Paddy Flu is the granddaughter of Ifrit. And Patty is on to try and locate his treasure, the Maristella, which will help her reclaim her memories. And she is an amnesiac girl and who's lost her memory over what has happened. And Patty Flua is an extremely likable character. She may come up as childish, considering she is a child. She's a lolly after all. But, a lot of her antics is comedic, and the way she talks as a pirate is pretty fun, is pretty amusing as well. She does at times talk like a pirate, she does talk like a pirate, hence why she has this pirate, hence, hence the why she has a pirate get up. Um, one thing about the other, one thing about Patty is like, unlike the other characters, her arts are extremely unorthodox and random. You have no idea how she's going to act until you use her yourself. And I have used it, used Patty a few times throughout the, um, my playthrough. <coughs> And I've been wanting to get a couple of skits with her, so that you know, not using her off so much, or one well, where she um, uses her form change quite often. Oh, uh, and trust me, I gotta say this, guys, but Patty Flua has an upset as a crush on Yuri, a fully grown man. That's right. That's right. A lolly <laughs> whose love interest is a fully grown man. You know what that means, folks. <clears throat> it's a trap. Yuri's gonna get gonna get into deep trouble if he if he was caught if any if he was caught laying with her in bed. <laughs> oh, that that would just be that would just be insane. But I really like Patty a lot. She's very funny. Especially the way she appears in front of the party a couple of times. One time when she's hanging up on the 
ceiling on a mat on a couple of mats. I forgot what they what they're called. Uh, one scene where she gets gobbled up by a monster and she gets vomited out. Another time where she um, appears in the desert <laughs> to surprise the back party. Uh, it's just hilarious. You have to see it for yourselves if you've already got it. I I would like I would wish there was a patty doll so I could hug her. And there are a couple of side quests involving her as well, which will relate to the story and her relation and um, the relationship with I three pirates and so forth and so forth and Cypher as well, which I'm not going to spoil out because even though I'm not there yet. I'll eventually get there soon. Uh, but other than that, this is a fantastic update of the original game. Obviously I got the PS4 version here, but the game is on the Xbox One and the Nintendo Switch and on the PC on Steam. And the PC version, it can be run on 4K, whereas on consoles, it runs to 1080p. And, and I believe on the Xbox One and the, P and the Nintendo Switch versions, it runs 30 frames per second outside of battles and 60 frames per second in battles. Except for the PS4 version. And I'm not sure if this is true or not because I don't have an Xbox One. On the Xbox One X console. Where, where they'll run at 60 frames per second throughout the whole game. Making the PS4 version pretty much the go-to version of the game. PC version I think will also be at run at 60 frames per second. But then again I haven't got the PC version so I wouldn't know. But uh, the PS4 version is the one I, I'm sticking with. Uh, but this is this is the ultimate ver which does make this the ultimate version of Tales of Vesperia. If you haven't played Tales of Vesperia, you need to get your hands on the definitive version. But I do want to go back to the Xbox 360 original because there were some trophy tr achievements I didn't unlock. And I will go through the achievements I'm, I'm missing and I'll eventually record them. Log them down, unlock them. Uh, get myself 1000 gamer points. Now, on the definitive edition, I'm at the point where I just got in Estelle back after the boss battle with her. So I'm just going to be doing and so and then I decided to just take on a couple of more side quests and I'll eventually um, I'll start taking on like um, The next dungeon which will involve the boss battle with Alexei So that, So that is why So that is my current progress in Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition. So, oh, I'm happy to have this. As you can see, yeah, I'm happy to have those. So then. So then, that one will be... Mostly it for my um, games uh, of January 2019 that I've collected. Just, just two games. 
Dead Island, Dead Island Riptide, and Council of Spirit Definitive Edition. I will continue to be playing the Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition. There's still plenty to do on that before I um, eventually work on a full review of the game. I want to make it as thorough as possible. There's so much I want to talk about in that one. Uh, just thinking now, now what else? Um, February, I will have some um, top 10 lists planned. And they're going to be and they're going to be focusing on the games of 1999 and the games of 2009. So it'll be four top 10 lists until all of February in, in, for our February. So I wouldn't mind working on those. And then I'll eventually return this to schedule of one top ten per uh, month per month. So that um, I can make myself more flexible and put myself on track again. <laughs> track again. Even though my reviews are going to take a quite, a quite a fair amount of time because I want to play my games and see as much as they offer and see if I've gotten enough evidence. So, um, so eventually I'll work on those. All the other games, I will continue to um, get some trophies for. Star Wars Battlefront 2, the 2017 version, I'm going to be getting close to getting a Platinum Trophy. I'm going to eventually start tackling the single player campaign. And get the final multiplayer achievement trophy. And then get the Platinum Trophy for it. So now means I'll have my next Platinum Trophy. Tales of Asperia Definitive Edition, I will work on the trophies until I get to the final, very last one. Which I want to do with Patty on, on the screen. So I want to show Patty on the screenshot. And also I want to make the game my 20th Platinum Trophy. Because it was the game I had high hopes for. So that means I will tackle other games for the, for the, for the next Platinum Trophy. So that'll be it guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I didn't have much to say because I'm still working on other things. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And be sure to give me your thoughts on what you thought, think about all of those. And I hope to see you all in the next video. So take care of yourselves and goodbye.